Hello and welcome to the Nerdum Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things pop culture, cinema, and geek. Jurassic World, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's taking the concept that the original movie set up and turns it into exactly what you expect it to be. A grand theme park like Disneyland or Universal Studios or SeaWorld. With interesting visuals and a cast of superheroes. No, seriously, look it up. Star-Lord is the title actor. Today's, today, we look at this movie and we think that could be plausible because we see this stuff because that it's exactly what Disneyland is. It's exactly what SeaWorld and Universal Studios is. And we're getting closer and closer to this concept because we are actually able to complete cloning to a degree. We haven't been able to do it for humans yet, um, but we have been able to do it with animals successfully since 1996 which is the crazy part we've been able to do this for 20 years and it, the research has just been continuing so today's question i ask is this should why should we commercialize this idea so liberally i mean this type of work is common now whether it's cloning uh, plant life or uh, cloning just in general it's something that we're all just striving to get to but does Jurassic World kind of predict what the downfall of that's going to be? I would argue yes. Because not only is it one of the worst parts of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, but cloning imparts this kind of idea that we are so constantly driven to get to it. Like uh, in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, there, uh, the big plot twist, spoilers for you guys who haven't seen it. Um, if you guys are planning to see it, I suggest you watch it before I say this. If you aren't, and you just want to listen to the rest of this, then by all means. Uh, one of the biggest twists of it, if you can call it a twist, is that the daughter is actually just a clone um, of the Hammond's secret partner's daughter. It's weird. It's way too much at one time. It... Uh, implication wise I guess it it says something about the rest of the series like oh they can actually clone humans now what's next but at the same time it's like okay did we really need this I guess we did because she at the end of the movie instead of letting the dinosaurs just die like everybody has said to she decides to open up the gate and let them free on the world because Oh, they're alive. Yeah, but at what cost? Like, they weren't supposed to be alive. Natural selection already took its course. Dinosaurs aren't meant to be in today uh, today's environment. Uh, you look at uh, the series of events of our evolution and you see that the environment, along with us, has changed. Summers are hotter, winters are colder, um, some days are sh longer, some days are shorter. And we take this idea and we think uh, nothing of it, because it's in small doses. It's a gradual change in environment, and we might comment, oh, it's super hot today, oh, it's not too hot today, it's too cold today. But we don't really think about how much it has changed unless we see it on our chart. Like, 20 years ago, these uh, the temperatures um, at this time were vastly different than they are today. In fact, if you guys are paying attention, summer wasn't that hot this year. But then we get to August, and we get 100 degree weather. And we're right, up to, we're right next to fall. How is that making sense? And... Uh, in all honesty, do you think a dinosaur who's adapted to an entirely different climate? I mean, just imagine it. 20 years ago, it was vastly different. 20,000 years ago, 200,000 years ago, it would, have been, it would have been unrecognizable in terms of weather conditions. But that's what the dinosaurs were born into. They were born into an environment where they had to deal with these immense uh, temperature shifts. 
and this correlates with their uh, ability to survive. Because as much as we might want to create dinosaurs again, we also have to remember that you're not creating a dinosaur faithfully. Like, Jurassic World says this idea pretty much the entire time. They genetically modify the dinosaurs, even in the first one. They genetically modified all the dinosaurs with uh, a gene from frogs so that they all are born female. And that's not natural. That's not how they were created. So it's not a carbon copy. But at the end of the day, you also have to admit that none of this is a carbon copy. Jurassic World introduced the Indominus Rex, which is a um, mixture of the T-Rex and the uh, and the raptor and whatever else the plot writers were coming up with. And for one, because they wanted to come up with a bunch of superpowers that dinosaurs apparently had, which, again, makes no sense, and this is one of the biggest things that I have a problem with in terms of Jurassic Park. Uh, Jurassic World, that is. But also, they give these powers pretty nonchalantly like they're like oh yeah we spliced together the genome of these different animals to create this one and we knew it was going to work and that doesn't make sense to me how did you know it was going to work in fact i doubt seriously if you're splicing together so many genes that it would work like that sure i might like to see that but you're talking about hundreds of years of genetic mutations whittled down into the series of 20 years. And granted, with the introduction of Jurassic Park's discoveries into how the gen genetic makeup of creatures work, I could see that, based off that research, that you made leaps and bounds into the world of dinosaur creations. But it doesn't make sense in the long run, because how does that affect anything? I mean, the dinosaurs, sure, they can be created um, with, uh, if we take a look at agricultural business, they put uh, genetic modifications into their animals to uh, get them in peak physical conditions or uh, protect them from viruses or uh, to make them more uh, versatile in terms of weather arrangements. You could do the same thing to dinosaurs. It's what we do in the agricultural business, and it's the common practice. But with dinosaurs, you're changing so much. There's a difference between giving a cow a vaccine for a disease, um, mad cow disease probably, and there's a difference between giving that to that animal and giving hundreds of years of vaccinations, of um, mutations, of protections, of bodily uh, evolution to a dinosaur that's been dead for hundreds of millions of years. Because, again, these things were around a lot longer than we were. These things had to deal with conditions, germs, uh, concepts that we never even touched upon. We can only imagine because we can find a skull here and there, piece it together, and get a rough estimation of what they look like. And with the amber idea that you could find genetic material inside mosquitoes, inside liquid amber, you can theoretically get something out of it, but by making a carbon copy of it, it's just unfeasible and completely immoral. Because you're bringing something that never should have existed on this planet back from the dead. It's kind of like Pet Cemetery. The entire moral of the story of Pet Cemetery is that you shouldn't bring back what's dead. Um, and honestly, I could talk about Pet Cemetery the whole time, but Pet Cemetery gives us that concept. And it drills it in our heads that. Yeah, we probably shouldn't do that. They're going to come back and we're probably going to die. It's kind of the same thing with Jurassic Park. You can't bring back your animals and expect nothing to happen. 
you can't genetically modify this dinosaur to react in every best possible way and expect it to um, obey every command that you put out for it. It's going to outthink you. And to an extent, I think uh, this is where Jurassic World starts falling apart. They treat their animals, well not treat their animals, they treat their dinosaurs like they're not evolving properly. I mean, we, we saw this in Jurassic Park 3 where the raptors didn't act like any of the other movies. They just acted like um, they were playing with their food. Whereas in the original movies, they hunted succinctly, they hunted efficiently. And when we lose that, we start losing characteristics. It's like if I had a character, if I had Batman, and then I have, with a dark attitude for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and then all of a sudden I'm like, you know what, we're going to have him a lot more preppy this episode, okay? Hi, I'm Batman, I'm here to stop you, Joker. And honestly, that would be off-putting, not only because that's not how Batman sounds at all, and because we couldn't picture that for Batman. That would be insane. But in Jurassic World, they had the idea to do that. And it just didn't make sense at all. And one of the biggest things that I see with Jurassic World, uh, just in general, is that they made the same mistakes as Jurassic Park. And I talked about this last week's episode. Um, where they make the same mistakes by opting to make profits and act like everything's fine and deal with it uh, under the rug without alerting the main public so that their reputation's still okay. That was, that was happening in the first movie. And it... Again, this just makes me angry when they have these characters that are like, well, I'm obviously going to sacrifice everything to make sure that our reputation is the best. Because we've already seen this song and dance. It's going to come back to bite you, and it's going to come back to bite your assistant, which was super gruesome. I mean, seriously, what were they thinking with that one? That was just brutal. Because in Jurassic World, there's a scene where the dinosaurs start breaking out of containment, and... The assistant, who literally did nothing, she was actually a pleasant person. I, I wanted to see her till the end. She is attacked by a, um, a, uh, P, uh, what, pterodactyl. Starts with a P. Sounds like a T. She's picked up by a pterodactyl, dropped to another pterodactyl, and then she is eaten by the giant, uh, ocean dinosaur coming up from the water and like freaking snapping, snapping both her and the pterodactyl. And I'm just like, was that necessary? Like, we spent so much time on that death. It, it feels like it should have been like a villain's death, maybe. Uh, maybe then that would have been warranted. But this was just a random person. Maybe they forgot a scene or something. But again, it was just cruel. So with Jurassic World in general... They had these concepts down. They had um, the same plot as the other movies, but then with a little twist to it. Claire is uh, not my favorite character at all. In fact, I was surprised when I saw um, Jurassic World uh, Fallen Kingdom, and she didn't have charges brought up. I'm surprised she wasn't in prison, because she acted with... Uh, just neglect the entire time. I, if I was a lawyer in Jurassic World, I would have gone for a lot of penalties. Because with negligence, uh, especially in a music park, you could settle. You could settle absolutely. But she was aware of the threat that this dinosaur was putting onto the rest of the guests. And she chose not to alert anybody. She chose not to send anybody home. It just didn't make sense. I mean, I get it. In a zoo, like, could the curator be held responsible if uh, if a lion eats 
um, one of the attendees. Sure, I could see that happening. But it, that's also comes with the day-to-day -day operations. If you're feeding a lion, they take every precaution. And that's probably going to fall onto the entity of the zoo, not just the curator. He's not going to be the fall guy all of a sudden. But Claire is the one calling the shots here. And yes, she's pressured by shareholders, investors, and all that stuff. But she should be thinking with the safety in mind. I'm surprised that she's not out completely. And with the characterization that they give her in the movies, it, it I just don't see her as a viable character. Like, they build her up in um, Jurassic World as this careless character, and then they bring it over to uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, where she's fighting for dinosaur rights. And I'm just sitting there, and I'm just thinking, why the hell is this happening? So there was no indication of this happening in the other movies. Yes, I understand that people get leave these movies with a different mindset, like uh, Dr. Grant said he would never go back to Jurassic World, but Jurassic Park has a tendency for making their characters go back on their previous statements, like literally five seconds after they say them. Like with Grant, he, s he says, I'm never going to back to uh, Jurassic Park. And then, like, five minutes later, he's like, okay, I'm going back because they're paying me a lot of money. It just doesn't make sense. That... But, you know, it, the movie has to happen. But plot-wise, can't you come up with something a bit more? Like, these characters are just... Um, it's like watching a horror movie where you know that the characters are going to die. You know, it, it's just unavoidable. There's probably going to be a final girl. There's going to be the killer. There's going to be a couple of comic relief characters, and there's going to be some characters that you absolutely loathe. What Jurassic World is doing is they're following that formula of storytelling where they're not giving enough, um, what's it called, uh, characterization to their characters. And you see that in the end product. You're like, eh, well, I don't really care about these characters. But it's presented in the Jurassic Park format, so you're not exactly expecting these characters to die, or at least you don't want them to. And that's one of the biggest problems with Jurassic Park. Because Michael Bay uh, has this problem as well, where he creates these, he focuses, focuses on stunts first, then story. Because you can watch Transformers film, say, okay, that's freaking awesome. You know, the cars are flipping around and they're blowing up and they're getting into fist fights and just so much testosterone. But then you listen to the dialogue and it's like, this sucks. <laughs> I mean, it, it really does. And Jurassic Park is the same way because they're focusing on the spectacle of the dinosaurs and hoping that you're still enthralled with them. And then making dumb decisions in the plot. Which is what bugs me every time I watch this movie. Because they could easily fix this stuff. They could close down the park. And granted, some parks are less willing to do this sort of action, and they're more willing to let people keep coming, otherwise they're just going to go bankrupt. Like Disneyland, they had to open up because otherwise they were going to just lose everything in the park. So when they open back up, they have to introduce new safety precautions and new standards and new everything to make sure that they can stay open. But they had a governing body in front of them. They had to make sure that they uh, appeased the U.S. Uh, safety standards. Jurassic World, on the other hand, doesn't have that. It, it said specifically that they're in uh, islands. They're not in the U.S. So they're not really under anybody's jurisdiction, except for um, people who own the sea. So I, I guess Aquaman could probably rule in on this stuff, but, you know, he's more of a, of a maritime kind of guy. Actually, I wonder who controls... Oh, I, I'm getting off track. They don't really have that governing body in front of them. I think 
what could have happened and what should have happened is that they introduced this idea that there is new accountability. Because in the past, it sounds like Jurassic Park really didn't have a lot of accountability. At all. See, the Jurassic Park, they had that worker die on site. And the worst it seemed to have happened was a slap on the wrist. Like, I'm sure there was restitutions paid to the family, but it didn't really seem like the park was closed down. Whereas in most other parks where if that event does happen, it's probably going to close down because whoever uh, got killed is going to want restitution and a lot of it. And to make sure that these standards are met, they bring in the lawyer. But they don't really bring in like an OSHA regulator. And again, that might be because of uh, their jurisdiction and the lack of thereof. But they don't really seem to abide by any governing standards. And can you imagine how crazy that is? I mean, imagine if I said, all right, uh, for one day, and one day only, you are allowed to build anything you want. I mean, anything. And you don't have to abide by anybody's standards. Now, what the result of that would be is a bunch of contractors going out, building as much as they can with the cheapest materials to make the most profit. And then when people would buy it, they would have a bunch of faulty uh, buildings, faulty housing, faulty uh, park playgrounds, because they were making the best profit. Which is the problem that a lot of people gloss over in these types of movies, where they avoid responsibility for what they make. And I think it's about time we change that stereotype. I mean, it would be kind of cool to see where, they, where it goes if everything was followed down to the letter. Because I feel like they've learned from their mistakes. They learned that making dinosaurs was a bad idea. But at the same time, it doesn't seem like the story found out that's a mistake. Because they keep coming back to it. In Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the clone girl lets all, all the dinosaurs because she thinks that they're alive. That's, it doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? They're just going to go out and hunt people now. It didn't change anything. They weren't going to survive on their own otherwise. And yet you just let them go anyway. It makes no sense. And without accountability to make sure that that clone girl didn't do that, or that InGen and the rival companies are kept in line, why? I mean, Congress already ruled on it, first off, in the movies. They already ruled that they should not save the dinosaurs. So, yes, government is taking a look at this stuff, but they aren't doing enough. They need to deal with this stuff more directly. And unless we can get more people on board with it, that idea, I think we're at a bad place. So, uh, in other words, um, in terms of should we commercialize the idea of bringing dinosaurs back, I don't think so. I think we need to let Jurassic Park die. I mean, unless they're bringing something new to the table, I don't think we need to see any more of this. And it coasts off the idea that everything needs a remake, everything needs a reboot, everything needs something else. When the original is fine the way it is. Disney is notorious for doing this stuff. They create live-action movies that are shot-for-shot -shot remakes of their animated films, and they make a huge amount of money, even though it wasn't original. Like Lion King. Granted, it's not the live-action, but they're really hesitant to say that it's not, because it looks so realistic. It's like, ooh, look at it. This is the live-action uh, Lion's King, except we're not saying it, you're the ones who are saying it. And I just want something new. I just want something new so I can say that was awesome without being hesitant about saying that. So 
without uh, further ado, I'd like to spend a little bit of the uh, podcast to tell you that these episodes are going to be cutting, uh, cut down into 30 minute segments. Uh, roughly 30 minutes. I know this is going to be cut a little bit shorter than that. Mainly because uh, I no longer have a co host on these episodes. Um, when I do have a co-host, they will be they will tend to be longer. However, just carrying on the conversation myself, it's a little hard to do for about an hour. Uh, I'm sure you guys have noticed that, so I'm going to be making sure that I get down to the points. Uh, and if I try and squeeze an hour out of myself literally every week, it's going to be a little hard. But with that set being said... I will be posting more frequently. So yes, the episodes will be shorter, but I will be putting more out, if that makes sense. I hope it does. And for you guys listening on YouTube, I will be trying to get more content out uh, in terms of that. And again, guys, um, this podcast in channel in general is supported by you guys. You don't even have to do anything. You just have to listen. Uh, and the more you guys listen, the more I know that there are there is an audience. So the best way to support is to uh, follow me on Spotify. Make sure that uh, your your uh, sorry, my dogs are barking. Make sure that you're on. Uh, you are alerted every time I post a video. Uh, for you guys on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon to actually be notified when my videos come out. So, without further ado, I would like to say thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Nerdum Podcast. Have a good day, everybody. Uh, school has started, so those of you who are in school and currently taking classes like I am, uh, good luck to you, and stay on top of it. And I gotta go tell my dog to be quiet or give him a treat. Either one. So without further ado, goodbye. <laughs>